The Frostclaw Elemental Nova Sorcerer is one of the best builds for this mastery. It boasts an incredibly high cast speed, solid defenses, good mobility, massive AoE damage, and lots of crowd control. The build actively casts Frostclaw, which then passively procs the Elemental Novas around the screen, crowd controlling many enemies and obliterating them all at the same time. Compared to other versions of the Sorcerer that you may have seen or heard of, Frostclaw Nova is far more fun than the Glacier Sorcerer, and it's capable of still clearing a decent corruption. Void Mage is a bust after about 150 corruption or the first time you meet a panther mob. Cast on crit or meteor type builds leave you out of mana, running around like a chicken with its head cut off, unable to teleport or even use flame ward. Out of all the available sorcerer builds at the current time, this is the best combination of clearing corruption and bringing you enjoyment while you play the game. Let's start by looking at two nodes within Frostclaw. The first one is Celestial Conflux, and this gives you a 42% chance to cast Elemental Nova when Frostclaw reaches the target. This is a very high percentage chance on cast. If you're worried that 42% chance isn't enough, well, the screen gets bombarded by these elements Elemental Nova explosions, so 42% chance is enough, and the higher the cast speed, the more of these you'll get, and look at the war generation we have just from standing here. The second node allows Frostclaw to generate ward per freeze rate multiplier, and it takes 40% of this freeze rate multiplier, however that's a fairly easy stat to stack. Frostbite Shackles are an excellent choice for the glove slot, and again you could slam cast speed into this if you have the ability to do so. Additional freeze rate multiplier is going to further the ward generation, and ward retention is going to help you sustain that ward as well. So a higher freeze rate means more ward per cast, and faster cast speed also means more ward making this ward on cast build capable of keeping up with a ward per second and ward per missing health versions with top gear. Although I don't have the gear set up to show you, there are some players capable of hitting 50,000 ward through the ward per cast setup. For cast speed, we can pick that up in several spots. If you have a Mad Alchemist Ladle that also has legendary potential, you can slam some increased cast speed into that, and you'll also have the Aphex that gives you increased cast speed per two intelligence. Getting cast speed on the offhand should be relatively easy, and also on the Relic should be another task that you can do. It's more important that you find the right base types for these particular slots since this stat should be so accessible. In the Relic, look for an Elder Eye. This is going to give you increased cold damage, chance to chill, and freeze rate multiplier, again furthering the war that this build will have. For the offhand, look for either of the offhands that have access to spell critical strike chance. What you can see here is when I have this equipped, I have about an 81% chance to crit. Without it, it goes down to 35, so that base critical strike percent chance is then modified through everything else, giving you a dramatic boost to your crit. Flame Rush is our traversal skill, but we'll also use that to cast Static Orb, and the reason we want to cast Static Orb is in order to proc Lightning Aegis. For an 8 second duration, we get 50% increased lightning damage, which will benefit the Nova, but more importantly, we take 25% reduced damage. Pair that with Crest of Unity that allows you to take 17% less damage from ignited, shocked, or chilled enemies, and the Rune Master passive, Spear of Protection, that allows you to take 8% less damage as well and boost your health at the same time, and you have an overall very tanky character. If you want to alter this into a Rune Master version, I would recommend taking the note here in order to pick up the cast with Runic Invocation. You can then drop Flame Ward from the specialization and use that for Runic Invocation, and boom, you've got a Rune Master build for this as well. You can leave Elemental Nova on the bar. This has a zero mana cost, so if for any reason you run out of mana or simply don't have the sustain on your current gear setup, then you can always use Elemental Nova in order to continue to deal some damage and generate some ward as well. Bear in mind that Flame Rush is different than Teleport. You actually need to hold this button down and release it when you get to your destination, as opposed to Teleport, which you simply just click. An unspecialized Snap Freeze is just for emergencies. This allows you to freeze enemies that might be too close, or if you just need an extra second in order to start spamming your skills. In its simplest form, you'll simply hold down Frostclaw, and you can essentially face tank damage like this because you'll always be generating ward provided you're casting. So this is the easiest way you can play. Now, of course, we want to make this a little bit more efficient, You'll hold down the button to flame rush and that'll allow you to travel quickly to your destination using your frost claw. Again, if your mana happens to get low, you can always use the elemental nova and use this to regen some mana, in which case you can then start using frost claw again. You've got flame ward here and flame ward through the specialization tree also has the ability to proc when stunned. However, you've got two charges, so you can use one of those for additional ward and just allow you to increase your defensive as well as that'll support your character by adding some armor and additional ward per second while it's active. Flame Rush, a very good skill, and you can use that to zip around, or you can use it defensively to avoid attacks. A lot of people are more familiar with Teleport, so make sure that you get comfortable holding the button down. As you can see, the cooldown is fairly quick as well, allowing you to just kind of quickly zip from pack to pack. Now, I've been clearing a lot of these enemies out, but the real strength of this build really lies in its tankiness, allowing you to quickly get to the objective and simply just start nuking everything down once you're there. That wasn't really what we did in this particular Echo because I wanted to show the skills off, but you can zip around the map just going straight to the objective, casting Frostclaw when needed in order to sustain your ward, 
and then just clearing out the objective and running maps as fast as possible. The ones like this where you have a lot of fodder running around, you can always switch to the Nova and that'll just help you kind of directly cast the Nova on everything that's coming your way. Another great way to increase the defense of this build is to look for adorned arcane idols. This one has ward retention in the top line, which is what you would like. And on the bottom line, look for increased cold resist. Remember that increasing your cold resist as per the bottom affix on the frostbite shackles will also increase your ward retention. You can actually stack your cold resist over 300% and that will help you massively improve the amount of ward that you have. Snowdrift is another great choice for your gear, and the reason for that is you get additional cold penetration with Frostbite per 10 freeze rate, and we're stacking our freeze rate multiplier. Since Frostbite Shackles also apply Frostbite, this just gives us two sources in which we can apply some damage over time, which will also add up given the fast attack speed. The remainder of the slots and the idols can be used to cap your resists out, and you will have a little bit of difficulty doing this when you likely first convert to the build. However, over time, this will be a lot easier, and you can fine tune your blessings as well. Pick up intelligence and spell damage. This will help scale the damage of your offensive attacks, whether that be the Elemental Nova or the Frost Claw. And overall, you'll be using these for resist values as well, as you'll see basically have resist on almost every piece. As mentioned in the intro, I tried a ton of sorcerer builds and several builds that I didn't even mention in that intro. Glacier would be my second choice for builds to use. In fact, I used Glacier prior to the point of converting over to this build. I'd say roughly around level 80, you should be able to swap to this and have enough synergy to make it viable. I don't have many good things to say about the other sorcerer builds, unfortunately. The class, or the mastery rather, really just needs a buff at this point, very similar to Forge Guard. So keep that in mind if you're looking at this class or potentially even thinking about using the Rune Master version. I just want to give you an honest and objective opinion that unfortunately the mastery just isn't that strong. Now one way this build could see a power spike is if we can equip Harbinger of Stars and actually sustain the mana cost. This has a 6% chance to cast Meteor if you crit while above 0 mana. As mentioned before, we have an enormous amount of crit. I'm gonna use two dummies to show this off. I'm gonna focus the majority of the skills here, the Nova and the Frost Claws, that way you can see the Meteors fall over here. Now, given the amount of crit that we have, these Meteors are actually gonna fall fairly often, but it really ooms us very quick. I'm not specialized into the Meteor and you can alleviate some of that mana consumption and also regen some mana if you are specialized, so it won't be that bad. However, it still isn't sustainable. Overall, this is an incredibly fun build to play, but it does have slower boss kill speeds around two and a half minutes, even at 100 corruption. I'll leave screenshots for all the passive and specialization trees in case you're interested. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch and have a great day.